Thank you to Raycon for supporting PBS. There are cosmic events so powerful that they leave permanent marks on the fabric of the universe itself. Imagine two colossal black holes spiraling towards each other. They send ripples in the fabric of space-time, gravitational waves that we've only recently learned to sense. But ripples pass, leaving the pond or the universe unchanged when they're gone. But ripples aren't the only type of wave. There's another type of wave that leaves a permanent mark, a memory etched in that fabric of the universe. They're akin to gravitational tsunamis, and we're on the verge of being able to detect them. What does it mean for the fabric of space-time to remember? In physics, when we say that something has a memory of an event, we mean that it was changed by that event and retains information about that event. The crease in a piece of paper retains the memory of the event of it having been folded. The pocked surface of the moon remembers the comets and asteroids that have slammed into it in the past. On the other hand, your perfectly elastic strip of rubber has no memory of being stretched in the past because you returned to its exact initial state. We tend to think of spacetime as being elastic, that elasticity is why it supports waves, gravitational waves. But there are aspects to gravitational waves that do not leave the fabric of spacetime in the same state that it started in. Spacetime can be permanently changed by the passage of a wave. It can remember the wave. It's not just gravity, other forces of nature have memory effects also. But today we'll explore gravitational memory effects and how to detect them. First up, a quick recap on gravitational waves. In Einstein's general theory of relativity, spacetime is an elastic fabric-like thing that is stretched and curved by the presence of mass and energy. And like any fabric, it can support waves. In the case of gravitational waves, these are produced by any accelerating mass. Distances along and perpendicular to the path of a gravitational wave oscillate by tiny amounts. Even the most intense sources of gravitational waves in the universe, like merging black holes, produce gravitational waves that are only barely detectable at Earth by the miracles of engineering that are the LIGO and Virgo gravitational wave observatories. The types of gravitational waves that we've detected so far are ripples. They change distances in a completely elastic way. And after the wave passes, spacetime returns to its previous state. Think about a boat floating on the surface of a calm ocean. If the surface gets a little choppy with regular surface water waves, the boat just moves up and down. It bobs as those waves pass. The same is true of the water molecules themselves. The wave just moves these up and down. It doesn't displace them in the direction of the wave. Now imagine a tsunami comes. This type of wave is different because it drags the water with it rather than just moving water up and down. It also drags the boat, which is obliged to move where the water moves. Well, gravitational waves have this elastic component, the oscillatory waves that we've detected from black hole and neutron star mergers, but they should also have this non-oscillatory component. Spacetime isn't just being stretched and squished, it's being dragged along by the wave, potentially leaving gravitational memory effects that can leave a permanent imprint on the fabric of spacetime. Gravitational memory effects come in different flavors. To get a sense of them, let's look at the effect of a basic gravitational wave on a ring of stars that surrounds the axis of the wave. As the wave passes by, those stars oscillate together and apart in a way that causes the ring to squish and stretch. Without the memory effect, this ring should return to its circular shape after the wave, but the memory effect can lead to a permanent if tiny, displacement of the stars so that the ring is warped by the passage. This is the displacement memory effect. There's also a velocity kick memory effect where the stars keep moving after the passage of the wave. That's like the case of the rowboat in the tsunami. And there are more subtle effects, like the gravitational spin memory which imparts angular momentum along the path of the wave. If we believe the math of general relativity, then gravitational memory effects kind of have to be a thing. Both pen and paper exploration and computer simulations of gravitational waves reveal them. That said, we've never seen these memory effects in the real universe. Regular gravitational waves are hard to detect due to them being so weak, and their memory effects are even weaker, so even harder. 
Gravitational memory effects can't be detected by the current observatories like LIGO. These effects occur when spacetime doesn't fully return to its original state after a wave. There's some non-elastic stretching, squishing, or whatever else. But the arms of LIGO are made of metal and concrete and are fixed to the solid ground, and all of this matter has its own source of elasticity that pulls the arms back towards their original lengths against the minuscule stretching of the fabric of spacetime. Also, LIGO is sensitive to much higher frequency signals than we expect for these gravitational memory effects, so probably wouldn't see them anyway. At least, not for individual events. It may be that after many, many more observations of black hole and neutron star mergers, a faint memory signal will emerge in the combined data, but that's a long way off. In order to see these effects clearly, we need an observatory that is sensitive to low frequency signals and is free floating in space, so there's nothing to resist a lasting change in distances. Fortunately, we are currently building exactly such a device. It's LISA, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna led by the European Space Agency, which is scheduled for launch in 2035. LISA consists of three spacecraft arranged in a triangular formation separated by 2.5 million kilometers, but it otherwise works similarly to LIGO using laser interferometry to detect tiny changes in that enormous distance. LISA is expected to detect the low frequency gravitational waves from things like merging supermassive black holes, millions to billions of times more massive than the mergers detected by LIGO. It should detect displacement memory effects in these signals rather easily. Let's see what it'll look like. The gravitational wave signature from merging black holes looks like this an oscillating change in the relative lengths of the arms. Remember the alternating stretching and squishing of our ring? Absent memory effects, the difference in the arm lengths should return to zero after the passage, just as the ring returns to circular. But with displacement memory, there should be a growing offset between the arm lengths that persists even after the wave passes for a little while. Due to the limited frequency range accessible to any gravitational wave detector, it's not possible to make an absolute measurement of the permanent displacement from these memory effects. However, the change in the strain on the detector, which occurs due to the displacement memory effect during the gravitational wave measurement, should indeed be detectable. We'll have to wait until LISA flies to know for sure, but from our simulations, it seems very promising. Just a few months ago, a group of physicists simulated the merger of supermassive black holes and found that a detectable displacement memory effect is at its strongest and becomes detectable right before the merger happens and persists for a while after. So what can we learn from gravitational memory if we observe it? Well, these effects are a robust and inevitable prediction of general relativity. So their detection would once again prove Einstein right that's been a favourite hobby of physicists for the past 110 years and is always a good time. But it's even more exciting if we can find some subtle way in which GR gives an imperfect prediction and so needs to be modified or extended. A popular reason to modify general relativity is to try to explain dark matter without the matter. Some physicists think that all of this extra invisible mass that seems to fill the universe is just a result of our theory of gravity being a bit wrong. Modified gravity theories often try to add a non-linear curvature term to the Einstein tensor, weak adjustments to the theory that may add up in their influence over vast distances to give the impression of there being additional sources of gravity. Well, gravitational memory effects have a pretty distinct non-linear component to them. If we've gotten the non-linear components of general relativity wrong, then we'd get a wrong prediction for the nature of non-linear gravitational memory effects. When we're finally able to observe these effects, we may have a direct test that could determine whether the Einstein equation is perfect as is, or it needs the sort of additions that might also explain dark matter. These memory effects can also provide additional information about the sources of gravitational waves on top of what we get from the oscillations that we currently observe. The familiar oscillatory signal from merging black holes gives us a measure of their masses, spins, orbital parameters, and their distances. But these properties can be challenging to tease apart from each other. Any further information to help us decode the source of the waves can be helpful in doing that. In fact, we probably need to include these memory effects to even get the right answers when we start analyzing 
Lisa data. We may also be able to see the memory of ancient gravitational waves imprinted on the universe at its larger scales. We expect that cosmic inflation, which supposedly blew up the universe right at the Big Bang, would have generated colossal gravitational waves. The accumulation of memory effects from these primordial gravitational waves could have left its mark on the clustering of galaxies and even on the expansion rate of the universe. Measuring these effects and understanding gravity's memory may ultimately give us a window into events that occurred at the very beginning of time. The universe is old, but it remembers. It remembers its birth and it remembers past cataclysms. They are etched into the subtle shifts and warps in its own fabric. This gravitational memory is very likely all around us, waiting for us to learn to read this cosmic archive. We just need to don our reading glasses, aka our giant space laser triangle, and start to peruse the history of the universe writ in the memory of space-time. Thank you to Raycon for supporting PBS. If you want deep focus when you're trying to figure out the next type of gravitational wave to be discovered, you probably want to tune out the noise around you. That's why Raycon's Everyday Earbuds now feature active noise cancellation, ergonomic design, and multipoint connectivity. Coming in four unique colors, these earbuds have up to eight hours listening time per charge and come equipped with Quick Charge, where 10 minutes of charging yields 1.5 hours of battery. Raycon also offers a 30-day happiness guarantee. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash spacetime to get up to 30% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping for their Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. Hey everyone, you know how black holes pull everything in with irresistible gravity? And you know how the upcoming holiday season often feels the exact same way? Well, that's why we'd like to welcome you to our very first ever Black Hole Friday sale. On Friday, November 29th, for one day only, the entire merch store catalogue will be on sale at 20% off. We also have a bunch of brand new merch, such as our first ever multifunctional space-time pen, which features a level, rulers in inches, centimetres and millimetres, a stylus, a micro screwdriver, is basically a low-grade sonic screwdriver. Stand by for the full tech version. If you need somewhere to use that pen, we have our first ever collection of space-time pocket logs, which are perfect for capturing the equations of your theory of quantum gravity. We also have a new standard model LED nightlight for when you're working on your theory late into the evening, and a new neural net desktop mat to keep your computer stylish while you run your simulations, a 520 piece puzzle for when you're waiting on those simulations to render, and our first ever poster that will remind you of where all the elements came from. Oh, and finally, a Penrose Diagram Black Hole Rocks Glass for when you need a tasty beverage to celebrate your successful theory. Can we legally say that buying space-time merch will help you formulate a Nobel Prize winning physics theory? That's a grey area. But we can offer you 20% off every t-shirt, hoodie, patch, pin we've sold this year during the special reappearance on the merch store, which you could theoretically wear to holiday events or to accept any kind of important international science prize. And speaking of the non-Americans, if you're one of our many international viewers, November 29th will be the last date that we can guarantee international delivery before December 25th. So if you need a gift for any special person in the galaxy, including yourself, remember to go to pbsspacetime.com slash shop on November 29th for our first ever Black Hole Friday sale. <laughs>